Hello, Jordan. What's up, Michael? Just living. How are you? Good, man. We just got off the previous pod where we spoke about DMers and we had the, the cold DMers, the cold uh, cold callers in Instagram. The worst. I get a lot of those emails too to all Dude, my emails. so addresses. many emails. Yeah. And text messages. I get text messages from people's text lists that I didn't sign up to. Yeah, there's a lot of nonsense, a lot of spam. That's not how to build your business. It's just like spam as many places as possible. Yeah. Not, that's not how you build a reputable business. That is for sure. And it might work in the short term. It might work from the perspective of maybe bringing in some more sales, but long term, ho oh, ho, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. <laughs> you think you're just going to quit and then go hang around with your drug addict friends and not use? Oh, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Oh, I wonder if anyone knows amazing. that reference. That would be incredible. Email us at info at fitnessbusinessmentorship.com if you know that reference and we're just going to be blown away. That would yeah, be we outstanding. Will be, we'll be blown away. That's all. There's not like a, a real prize, but we will be blown away. All the respect that I have to give. Yeah. Let's dive into Q&A. Let's just dive in and see where it takes us. Should I open up my, uh, yeah. my Q&A box? Let's open up the Q&A box. And, and by the way, um, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> that's your baby. That's my I almost, baby. I almost just said her name. People, um, people watching on YouTube will be like, get to see my baby right there. That's my favorite picture. Very, very cute. <laughs> you're like, very right, cute. <laughs> no, no, I'm not like enough. Very cute. Cute bow. She looks like you. Great smile. Uh, oh my God, dude. I saw the funniest. Real quick. Real yeah. quick. Real right, quick. Right, yeah. Speaking of YouTube, you brought up YouTube. Yeah. We don't have advertisements. We don't we're not peddling nonsense. There's no pre-rolls. We're not wasting your time. This is free, uh, unadulterated. Is that a word? We're bringing you content every single week. In exchange, could you please subscribe to our YouTube channel? It's Personal Trainer Podcast, trying to build our YouTube, trying to reach more people. We'll call it a little, uh, just a fair little swap here, a little handshake deal. We bring you the podcast episodes. You subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. And with that, George, what were you going to say? I need to I need to find this screenshot. I sent this to my wife. Oh my God, dude, this is so funny. People watching on YouTube will see this picture that I'm about to show you. So you, you brought up the bow on my daughter and my wife loves to put bows on my daughter. It's just, I've never seen anything like it. And I found this meme on Instagram and I sent it to her and I lost it. <laughs> Parent. <laughs> Can you read that? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's really that's good. Perfect. Uh, so those watching on YouTube will see that hilarious meme. And uh, yeah, if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, we love YouTube. YouTube is great. Um, it's nice just because obviously if you're just listening to the podcast, it's amazing. We appreciate it more than anything. It's also like, I feel like part of the fun is, is sort of feel like you get to sit down and hang out with us. You see us. It's I think you can develop a more of a relationship with someone. They see your facial expressions and all that. So it's it's fun to see that with the YouTube crowd. Yeah, definitely. And you know, you're in the car. You need your eyes on the road. Understandable. Yeah, we love the audio course. crowd too, but a sub on YouTube helps massively. Let's dive in to that Q and A. Okay. I don't know if you're going to like this one. We'll just see how this goes. Um, it's uh, 26 asked how to do things it's, that- it's It's 26? It's a ITZA 26. Okay. It's a, it's, it's a, how to do things that appear really hard with less fear and more courage. Oh man. You're you don't like have this a, one. No, I love it. But I just, oh. I don't have, my answer is rip the bandaid off. Like just brute force Nike, just do it. <laughs> Nike, S just do it. I'm, it's the greatest slogan <laughs> of any company ever. <laughs> because it's it's so foundational to life. Like, you know, fear is a, is good and normal. Uh, take that first step. Yeah, I think I think what this person is doing. It's a twenty six. It looks like a, a woman in the picture. I think what she's doing is 
she's making it seem like fear and courage are opposites. Mm. And that because she said, how to do things that appear really hard with less courage and more fear, almost as though as fear goes down, courage goes up. And I think that's completely an ass backwards way of looking at it. I think courage is doing something when you have fear. If you're not, doing not something- e Not even that you think that, that's, that's just true. Yeah, I, I think if you don't have fear and you do it, that didn't it take wasn't. courage. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I think courage is, is fear is a pre prerequisite of courage. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's it's not about doing it with less fear or trying to to mitigate the fear. That it's about embracing that the fear is okay, but that doesn't need mean you need to stop doing it. You need it means you need to build up the courage to just fucking do it anyway. And and by the way, us saying that doesn't necessarily make it any easier. In fact, it doesn't make it any easier. It's it's going to be just as difficult. But you know, sixty years from now, it's a, are you going to regret doing it and potentially failing or potentially stumbling before you got your legs under you and figured it out? Or sixty years from now, are you going to regret never taking action on that thing? Yeah, it's exactly right. Uh, I I this reminded me of a newsletter question from. The main man Sahil Bloom, that was, uh, uh, gosh, I'm just gonna read it straight because I don't want to butcher it, and I really liked it. If you knew you would die in ten years, what would you do today? And he goes on to say, we've all seen the shorter term version of this. If you knew you die in a year, what would you do today? But he finds that less uh, impactful and basically less relevant. But a ten year horizon is a little more applicable. That's a good one. Um, the first thing it brings up in my mind is what I want to know the day that I die. Like what I want to know, even if it's 80 years down the road, what I want to know. And I don't think I would. I don't think I want to know what day I'm going to die. Um, but if I was going to die in 10 years, if I knew that I was going to die in 10 years, then what would I do today? Um I think I would probably do the exact same thing today. I, I really don't think it would change much, to be honest. I think I would probably do, because it's 10 fucking years. <laughs> like, you know, like it's a while. And I would still want to have a great quality of life. And I'd still want to build a business to support my wife and daughter when I'm gone. And, you know, like it's, I want to make sure that they're going to be as comfortable as possible. And I think one of the best ways, like I think about it, like how am I going to be remembered once I'm gone at, at that point? And, and how are those who were, will still be living, how will they be living as a result of what I've done? So I think I would still do exactly the same shit. I really don't think it would change until probably like three to five years out, probably closer to three, to be honest. I think that's when real changes would start to be made uh, in terms of maybe day-to-day -day activity, in terms of maybe where I'm living or uh, or any of that stuff. What about you? Uh, I would stop being such a pussy. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean that I would stop... Uh, um, I would stop not doing things out of fear. Okay. What and, and right by the now. way, and by the way, I think your answer like we can run with this whole thing, but yeah. when I hear someone say I wouldn't change anything, what I hear is I'm living perfectly. Well, well we, so what we I said we don't, we don't need to go deep, and I should probably elaborate. No, we could go deep. Let's go deep. What I said was I wouldn't change anything about like my day-to-day -day activities. Like I'd still work. Like, I, I think a lot of people, their first thought is like, oh, I would stop working or I would, w whatever it is. It's like, I think I have a very good work-life balance right now in terms of I work several hours a day. I'm with my family several hours a day. Uh, what you said was more of a mindset shift. No, 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 no. It's an action shift. I would, I would. Uh, like, what specifically would you do? Like, so not I'd, just I'd, stopping being pussy, but I'd like start, what action I'd, specific? I'd start saying things publicly that I believe to be true 
even though I knew there would be backlash or I would mm. lose money as a result of it or who knows, make more as a result of it or be hated because of it. Um, yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, so here's what I'm thinking. So for example, 10 years is a long time, right? Like it is <laughs> and it isn't. In 10 years, so for example, on this podcast, we don't talk about some things because – for on, example, the I've tried on, talk the in on the internet, we don't talk about something. We yeah, don't talk we don't about talk a lot about, of things. Yeah, we don't talk about things because it could potentially impact our brand, our legacy, our business, all of that stuff. So what you're saying is if you knew in 10 years you were going to die, starting right now, you would start saying everything. And and so would that mean that you'd make less targeted content towards personal trainers and you would make content deliberately more just based on how you feel and like what you like want people to know about your beliefs like no not, what would not, that based, look like? not based on how i feel but based on what i believe to be right right but like so right now we have the the personal trainer podcast which I we would, love i would continue to do this you I continue just, to do that absolutely okay yeah so it, is that it, it, it wouldn't be it would be additive Got it. Okay. Okay. So you would be more active publicly yes. and not well, just about things like strength training, nutrition, all that. You'd right. be active publicly with everything. Right now, content for basically all of us. I mean, there's, there's, I actually don't know anyone in the fitness industry who, yeah, I don't know anyone in the fitness industry. I, content wouldn't be the marketing department of On the Regimen. Content would be, uh, trying to have a uh, maximal net positive impact on society. Mm. So not even just fitness, it was just everyone. But it, but it would, yes, but it would be fitness plus that because I actually think yeah, that fitness is- Because you care at, about fitness. Because I care about fitness and because I truly believe that fitness is the, at the ground level mm -hmm. of each individual's like- uh, wellness and and like physical and mental and emotional and spiritual health and well-being and like making you stronger physically makes you stronger in other ways and making lots of individuals stronger and better props up all of society so I, like there there would be equal or who knows maybe even more focus on fitness there would just be more of a whole lot of other stuff too i love that and i really love like man your own personal fitness and you is it's an individual responsibility and making society better, better as a whole, as we all know, starts with making yourself better as a whole and making yourself better as a whole. It, it, the foundation is health. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the foundation of it. And whether it's getting stronger, improving cardio, like maintaining a healthy body fat percentage, all this stuff, like it's, it's necessary mm -hmm. for yourself and for a better society as a whole. So I love necessary that you still for do yourself. fitness for your loved ones, for your family, for your community, for your country, for the world. Yeah, 100%. We could do a whole episode on this question. This question actually really hit me. I was sitting out in the sun and on vacation and read that and like hit me like a ton of bricks. Really? Mm-hmm. But I also, yeah, we can keep going or we can move on to something else. Dude, I'm good with anything. I'm good with anything. I think... You know, I just, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the podcast or not. Tell me if I have, but I, I very much think that organizations like the CDC, World Health, <laughs> Health, World, World Health <laughs> Organization, all that stuff, like their job is supposedly to help the health of the world as a whole. But even looking at, at their most recent response during during the pandemic i never saw them mention like get outside and exercise in fact they did the opposite they closed gyms and they kept liquor stores open they said stay inside don't go out it's like they, they never once said hey maybe we should pay attention to your nutrition maybe we should pay attention to your body fat percentage maybe we should pay attention here are some ways they i didn't see them putting out information on how to get exercise in your home cool you want to say stay, stay, stay at home awesome give people ideas and access to things that will allow them to exercise at home that will allow them to to eat better uh give them opportunities to improve their health not just say stay at home take the jab da 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 da, da. it's like and that's where i feel people 
in our position, you, me, and everyone listening to this, that's one of the, I've become so much more passionate over the last few years about what I do because I've, I had like a, a huge epiphany being like, there are government organizations that are supposedly designed to keep us healthy, but really the ones who I think are having the biggest impact are people on social media. I think mm. personal trainers on social media are having a bigger impact on public health than public health organizations that that's what they're supposedly designed to do. And it's like, what I, when I had that epiphany, I was like, holy shit, this is more important than ever to be putting information out about health publicly because people don't know what to do. And the, the organizations that are supposedly designed for this are not helping at all, or at least not helping like in the, the big bang for your buck, low hanging fruit ways of walk more, eat better, stay hydrated, get better sleep. Instead, they're doing the exact opposite. So yeah, I think it's, it's more important than ever. Bro, did I tell you I was reading up on what's the name of that weight loss drug? Ozempic. Yeah. I was reading up on Ozempic a week or two back and they linked out to a place on the CDC website where it lists causes and risk factors for obesity. Okay. And two of them were not overeating, not, <laughs> nothing related to nutrition, nothing related to exercise, nothing related to being sedentary. Two of the risk factors and causes of obesity were climate change and <laughs> racism. <laughs> I think I've seen that somewhere. Climate change and racism. What are they doing? Like what, uh, what the fuck are they doing? I actually don't know, which brings me to like my, my actual core belief on this, which is worrying about, uh, worrying about the government, unless you're going to get involved, right? Unless you're going to run for office, unless you're going to like try to elicit change, it makes more sense to focus on what you can control. Mm -hmm. which, which is reaching people directly, impacting people directly. You know, you mentioned, uh, the, the positive effect that personal trainers on social media have had at improving the health of millions of people across the world, focusing on what we can control rather than what our elective officials are or aren't doing that is helping or hurting society. And, and I don't know if that's right, because I, I don't know if like, you could have more impact if you actually got involved in that arena. I just don't think I'm cut out at all for that arena. Dude, f no. Fuck that arena. Nobody in that arena gets to a high level morally and ethically. <laughs> like, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think about it in terms of, I think Jon Snow is a perfect example and or Bran if, in terms of if you want to, the, the person who's going to be in charge needs to be someone who doesn't actually want to be in charge. Mm. So it, it's it, the person who wants power is the last person you want to actually have power. Mm -hmm. And uh, dude, it just seems like when, when they're saying things like that, where it's like, yeah, the main, some of the main causes of obesity are racism and climate change. It just seems like they're trying to virtue signal to a certain population, to a certain group left or right, whatever it is, they're trying to, to get votes is what they're trying to do. Is they're trying to get votes. It's they're not trying to affect change in public health. They're trying to affect opinion of who's in charge. And oh, do they see our cause? It's like, God damn. It equally pisses me off when I would see woke memes compared to Biden like being old and having dementia means memes. Yep. Yep. Same like, equally. Like the dopes on the right and the dopes on the left sitting around like throwing slings and arrows rather than being in the arena. I, I guess it bothers me. I get, at the root of it, it really bothers me because uh, I feel like I could or I know that I could be doing more and I'm not. And I think that's mm. why. But, but I just like despise that behavior from both sides. And even people I love who do it. I'm like, stop. Stop doing that. Yeah. It's just, it's just people being loud and it's a way to make them feel productive and um, a way to make them feel superior without them actually doing anything. It's so much easier for them to tear down the other side than it is for them to actually do anything to bring up, like to, to solve the issues that they're making fun of. And uh, it's, so, it's just crazy at this point because it just seems like now more than ever... It, 
listen, and I was born in the 90s, you were born in the 80s. I don't know if it was a product of me just being younger. I don't think it was, but I feel like th- we were not as divided as a country. Like, every, even, like 20, 2015, 2016, everything just sh- ramped up. I remember up. July 4th used to be one of my favorite holidays ever. July 4th with the fireworks and the hot dogs and everyone, like Republican, Democrat, didn't matter. We were just all like celebrating being here or Thanksgiving. What an amazing, amazing, like Thanksgiving to this day is like, I'm Jewish and Thanksgiving is is an American holiday. It's not a Jewish, like my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving about like, it's my favorite holiday. And now I can't say that without people being like, oh my God, do you know like what we did? Da, da, da. It's like, do you know any aspect of history at all? Like, do you, is, did you just read this on an Instagram account in a meme or like in an infographic? And then you've decided that Thanksgiving is an evil holiday when you don't know anything that else, else that happened in the history of the whole fucking world. Like you shouldn't celebrate anything in that case. It was just like, what a way to live. But it's just, I feel like we are so much more divided now than ever. And it's just people, like you said, slinging, slinging arrows and just getting mad. It's like, God, what happened? Why why are we so divided? Do you think that division is is and this would be more quote unquote conspiratorial, but do you think that that is more uh uh intentional and designed from some group of elites or do you think it's the natural byproduct of I don't know, uh, other factors? So I think there are many factors, but here's what I think. So a brand new Twitter files came out either yesterday or today that I was reading. And how many, I know I I stopped reading after like four because there were so many, I don't know, but every time I'm just equally blown away. But what's crazy is like, you can see emails between Twitter and the FBI and Twitter and the CIA. And you see emails between these higher ups at all these, like at, at this social media company and also between government like companies, the FBI, the CIA, these, you see the email interactions. And this one was very interesting because it was showing We've all known that there have been, you know, Russian websites and Iranian websites and all that, like that are specifically designed to try and create division within our own country, whether it's like, whether it's Facebook pages or websites, domains. And and in this most recent set of Twitter files that I saw, um, the FBI had been talking about how there had been like 22 or 23 domain names that had been bought by Iranian cyber warfare, uh, people to try and create division here in the US. And I think one thing that goes massively under the radar is the effect that other countries have had on our country in creating division. Mm. I think I think a lot of the division that's been created has been ignited by I think this is a new form of warfare and we're living through it and I think our grandkids and great grandkids will learn about the warfare that we're currently living through and we don't even realize it's not nukes it's not it's not poison gas it's not gunfire it's cyber warfare to create this such level I mean the tension that I sometimes feel in society is what I would imagine the tension would feel like when you were actually in a war and you don't know if like there's a spy, you don't know like who's watching you in a time of warfare, you don't know who's, who, who's you don't know any of this stuff. And so I think that this is a new form of warfare, relatively new, that the seeds have been planted 15, 20, 25 years ago with the start of the internet. Like if we don't think that that government agencies, as soon as the internet was created, weren't immediately looking at ways to how to infiltrate societies and essentially tear them apart from the inside out, from the ground up. Like we're we're naive beyond belief. So I, I mean, I think that a huge portion of it has been deliberately done by other nations to try to create division. And it's not just here. It's not just them versus us. It's also, I think it happens in the UK. I think it's happened in Australia. I think it's happened all over the world. And uh, I think we've probably done it to other nations as well. I think this is just a new form of warfare that we're seeing. And I think that has been a major reason for so much of the division and hatred that we see now. Interesting. What do you think? I don't know. And, and I, and I wish I knew more or part of me doesn't, but yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I had another thought though, more like uh meta back to the original, you know, if you knew you were going to be alive and or if you knew you were going to die in 10 years, how would you live differently? And I think to people who I really admire and uh and there's a moment on the All In podcast where um what are you thinking when you do that? 
dude, I just don't want to die within 10 years. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm like praying, like, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, where the host, Jason Calcanis, and one of the dudes on the podcast, David Sachs, who's like, one one is on the right and one is on the left, basically. Leans right, leans left. And they're having a spirited debate about, I think it was Russia, Ukraine. Yeah. And uh and they're both just, you know, they're they're friends, but they're it's a it's a real debate that they're having, which is amazing, which is why one of the reasons I love that podcast. And then they go to the fourth guy on the show who's kind of he's kind of like a fill-in. He's he's been on there. His name's Brad. He's a I, I don't know, very wealthy guy, hedge fund manager type. I, I don't know his exact job, but some I think he manages a fund of some sort. Um, really smart, like, and they they kicked to him. They're like, Brad, do you have anything to say? And and he just completely, like, completely, like, ah, oh, that a subject change. And <laughs> and I know that if I was in that position, and I was really educated on on whatever geopolitics. I right now I do the same thing that that guy did, which made me hate it even more. Mm. Like maybe even more disgusted seeing it. And and really, I don't really know anything about him or his situation. Whatever he didn't want to piss off his partners, but it made me admire the two dudes, Sax and J. Cal, for like really laying it on the line, knowing that like comments from both sides are going to hate both of them. Knowing Twitter replies are like people on this side are going to hate him, people on this side are going to hate him, but they're still willing to put their opinions out there. By the way, they're both like tens of millions or hundreds of millions in net worth. So neither of them really need to be doing this, but they're putting themselves out there voluntarily, which I have deep admiration for. And then to contrast that with like this like 15 minute spirited debate and then what do you think and he just immediately subject changes it's it's like twisting the knife of of uh, how how I want to live differently and and when it i was say like that like a mirror I, yeah it was like a mirror except that i don't actually know anything about geopolitics but on on certain issues where i might want to chime in but not because it's like do I want the negative feedback? Do we want cancellations here? Do we want like Republicans buy sneakers too? Which which is just this like pull back and forth between what I feel in my gut is right and 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 then you can rationalize the money side so easily. It's like, oh, well, I need to support my family. I need to like, you know, build this for it's it, it, like it's so easy to rationalize. But I think we all know in our gut. I think I shouldn't say that. I I believe that I can distinguish right from wrong pretty well for myself and the decisions I make. And I don't always win that, that, uh, balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes total sense. I just All don't right. want to die within 10 years, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd rather die 10 years from now living righteously than die meek and cowardly in my bed at 95. A hundred percent. Absolutely. And like, if it's the choice between those two options, that's a no brainer. Yeah. But you'd rather, you'd rather, <laughs> I, I get I'd it. rather <laughs> live right until 95. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but if, if it's between the two options. Yeah. If it was between those, you know, die like a gladiator. You, you didn't like Braveheart as much as Gladiator. Dude, I think Gladi Gladiator is in my top three ever. Braveheart was, is not in my top three. Braveheart might be like top fif top 15. I did really like it, but I just think Gladiator was just so good. I just, I love Gladiator so much. That freedom final scene when they're torturing oh, yeah. him. And oh, then the man. king who's like dying in his bed hears him yell freedom, getting tortured. Like, Yeah. Which one do you, you rate? Gladiator I, better. I think, or... I think Gladiator is better, but I but I just think they're both unbelievable. Agreed. All right. What else we got in this Q and A? Um, I've been talking about jujitsu a lot more lately. Uh, maybe we could talk about that because I am planning on putting something out, and like we could sort of people might ask like, how are you thinking about transitioning into a new a new industry potentially? Okay. But someone just someone messaged me and, and she said, lots of love. I've been, I enrolled my kids in jujitsu just because of, of you and everything I've seen from you, um, which has been very cool. I actually spent like 15 minutes just talking about that at the event I was speaking at in Vegas. I was mm -hmm. like, I went on a huge rant. I was like, everyone needs to be doing this. I just went off. And then it was funny because one woman, she was very nice and she agreed with everything I said. She She asked the question just to hear my thoughts. She said, 
is your daughter going to do jujitsu? And I was like, a hundred percent, like she doesn't have a choice. And the next question is always like, well, what if she doesn't want to, which I've gotten that a lot. Cause anytime I answer that question on social media, there are always a big group of people who are like, Oh yeah. Okay. Good luck. Wait until like she's older or no, 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 no. And I, I just can't relate to this because living under my mom's roof, if she said I was going to do something and I said, no, I would do, it's like, I don't even know how to put into words what would happen if I defied my caretaker, if I defied my mom, the person who put a roof over my head, who was giving me food, like I would get the shit beat out of me. And I wouldn't be like, no phone, no car, no nothing. Like, and that's, that's only when I'm later stages of high school, but ever like no going out, you're not going to parties. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. Like, good luck. Like if I say no, okay, we'll see how long that's going to last. It's it, for me, it's just like, if it's my kid, they're going to do what I say. And it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. There might be arguments, there might be repercussions, there, it might be a dip, but I'm, I'm not just going to give in. It's like, that's, I think that's jo the job of a parent and especially about something like self-defense. It's like, yeah, my daughter's going to do jujitsu. You better fucking believe it. Uh, well, is, so. is it stemming from a place of like a different parenting style where they give the child autonomy to make his or her own decisions? Maybe. Cause that, I don't know. that wasn't the way that I, yeah, like my parents, how I was my parents up. had final say <laughs> in our household and, and, and to be fair, they gave, they gave me a lot of like choices or, you know, what sports I liked or wanted to play or what type of activities or like there were freedoms, but like mm -hmm. there were rules. And if oh, you broke 100%. the rules, there were consequences. Like you get grounded. <laughs> you, you, you can't say that, you know, you, it, you are out doing this when you're not supposed to be. You need to be home at this time if you're late. Like, yeah. 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 Do, do you think parenting styles have changed over the years, which has led to maybe that question? Or do you think they were there were always many different ones, but we were only exposed to how we were brought up? I think there are always many different ones, but I think they've changed now less because I, I think the reason they've changed now is because of societal norms and like and the fear of your child going to school. Like, dude, I mean, I used to get spanked like nobody's business. Like now yep. a child says that they're getting spanked and the teachers are gonna like put in a, a request of child services and the, the child could be removed from the house. And like, now I think people are, are far more, parents are far more worried because, and rightfully so, because there have been horror stories of kids being taken away from their parents because of uh, uh, like, I don't know, <laughs> like, I think if a kid deserved to be spanked, like that kid's going to get spanked, right? Like that's how I was brought up. Well, there's there's even more extreme examples of what you just said. Oh, like, yeah. Not just yeah, spanking yeah. at home, but like, you know, calling my son him mm -hmm. and and or yep. dead naming my 12-year-old child. Yeah, leading to exactly. Like a, a, a lawsuit against the parent. Right. Like I'm not letting my child get a, a surgery that could change their life forever when they're eight years old. Yeah. It's like, yeah. what is going on? Yeah. It's, it, it's crazy. Like yeah. if you, if you, would you let your child get a tattoo at eight years old? It's like, probably not. <laughs> so like, let's wait until they're 18 so they can make their own decisions on that front. Yeah. And, and your point living under my roof, you're going to do what I say. A hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So like seeing, I like seeing people getting into jujitsu. It's, it's funny hearing Jordan. Everybody, what? everybody has to do jujitsu because everybody, when, because when Mark gave us that a few years back, it was, <laughs> it was such a good speech and he's throwing out public figures. He's like, if he did jujitsu, he wouldn't be in this position because he'd be stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Which by the way, a lot of like, a lot, a lot of those same benefits and I can't speak from personal experience, but I know a lot of the benefits that he espouses come from lifting as well. Yeah. Yeah, of course. With, without the same level of, of self-defense. Although there is something to be said about having a solid physique, which makes you less of a target, better posture, more muscle. There's that. And I will say, I mean, there was a crazy video I shared it on my story of a, a woman in a gym. I think it was her apartment building gym. 
Do you see this where there's a guy knocking on the door and she let him in because she just thought like he must have forgot his key or something? Did you see this? No. This I shared out my story. This this kind woman working out lets a guy in. And I had a huge conversation with my wife about this being like, you do not let anyone into this room. Like in any room, if you're in alone and someone's knocking, like if they don't have a key, like, hey, sorry, like can't let you in. You don't have a key. Mm -hmm. And it's, I would rather them like you be wrong. And then they just li literally forgot their key. Then then you let someone in and, and attack you. And this guy, he, he tried to rape this woman. He tried to rape her like in a fucking gym. And it didn't look like she had any martial arts training, but the message that was that I loved from Henner Gracie, who who is one of the greatest jujitsu competitors and greatest greatest jujitsu teachers, comes from the greatest jujitsu family of all time, was talking about it and and sort of examining the altercation. Which thank God, like, eventually the guy gave up because she didn't quit. Mm. Like she didn't stop. Like she like she. There's like she, he pinned her down, like he held her down relatively easily, but she didn't stop. She just kept fighting and kept fighting and made it very difficult for him. And that to me is like, that's why fitness is so important. Mm -hmm. Yes, like martial arts training could have maybe de-escalated the situation even more quickly. And she could have gotten, uh, maybe there could have been less trauma potentially, who knows. But the fact that she didn't quit prevented it from going to the to the end scenario that would have just been the worst of the worst of the worst situations where like raping and potentially killing it's like but she didn't quit and that's where because she's fit enough because she lifts weights because she's in shape she was able to make that happen be able to put up a fight for long enough to get him to stop yeah. where it's like that strength yes, and endurance that allowed her exactly. to do exactly yeah Man, what a what like a absolutely horrendous and helpless and terrifying feeling Oh my God. Can't yeah. even, I, 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 I literally cannot imagine. Yeah, exactly. So, but that, you know, I think fitness, strength training, all that goes hand in hand with martial arts training. It's like they're, they're, they should be done together. Sort of like, you know, strength and cardio. It's not one or the other. You should do both. I think everyone should have everyone. I'm pretty sure in Dubai, I'm pretty sure Mark Cerrone told me this. I, I didn't look it up to see if it's true, but you know, let me Google this real quick. Um, Jiu Jitsu in Dubai mandated let me see um yeah so quick google search brazilian jiu-jitsu is part of the required curriculum in schools in dubai mm. it's like i think that should be part of childhood development in addition to learning about finances in addition to learning about you know saving your money over the long term in addition to learning how to change a tire on your car in addition to like like Kids should be learning jujitsu from a young age in our schools, uh, like one hundred percent. So, we're we're just the way we think about fitness and activity and movement is all wrong. Where our lifestyle is sitting hunched over at a computer, so much knowledge work, so much inactivity, you know. And and I get it. People are exhausted, so then a lot of the leisure work is sitting on a couch, like laying in bed. There's just so little movement and we think about fitness as this tiny little bucket of like two or three hours a week out of 168 hours and and don't do too much because you don't want to overtrain right you don't want to overexert yourself mm -hmm. when in reality what's optimal and i'm not saying this th this definitely isn't easy especially with the lifestyle so many of us live and I do think it's a societal problem. Like you and I as individuals, because of the positions we've got ourselves in and because of the way our businesses work, we can carve out way more time for activity mm -hmm. in a week than the average person can. But the average person, because of the way things are, isn't doing nearly enough activity to be uh, you know, learning different martial arts skills, strength training an adequate amount, getting steps and cardio into – I don't even want to say optimize, but just to be healthier and perform better and be more competent in different arenas and be stronger and be harder to kill and be just, which is going to lead to those mental benefits as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's too bad that we're, we're in this position because we have so much prosperity relative to all other times in human history. And yet we're suffering from these problems of abundance, these problems. That, so true. You know, we've never in the history of our ancestors, our lineage of our species had a problem with over consuming calories like we have yeah. now in the last hundred 
years or less. Like th- these are these are brand new problems, and and we also like we have this like higher base level of need, right? And I don't know if that comes from comparison or comes from, I don't know what it comes from, but like we get in these jobs that grind us to the bone so that we can make, call it a hundred thousand when you're spending 80 or what, you know, 60, whatever it is, you're not saving enough, but you don't need to be spending that much. And if you think about like the quality, like the better quality of life you could have if you had a little smaller house, if you had a little older house, if you spent a little less on this, if you didn't buy that ba- that handbag, if you didn't like, you know, buy a hundred dollar dinner compared to twenty dollars, like all of these places where we could make these different decisions as individuals that could free us up. And maybe then we could work a little less and then be at the computer a little less and then do these other things that are good for us and feel better. I saw a tweet along the lines of like, you know, you can be a poor, it was like directed towards dudes. It was like, you'd be a poor dude and still eat steak and ride a cheap dirt bike and go swimming in the ocean and go for like a run through the woods and like whatever, like these things and be happier than someone who's rich, who's rich and like has a yacht and has this and has that. But like, we don't need those things to live a good life. And I think so many of us get confused and think that we do. Clip that. Clips how how right to become there. a personal trainer. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one, man. I like this episode. Yeah, me too. We're more coming, more fire. Should I look for another question? Sure. All right, let's see what you say about this one. I'm not going to say the name. Um, she said, I've been strength training for five plus years, no matter how lean I get, I always have love, love handles. Should I get surgery? I'm sad that she's asking this question. Mm-hmm. No, you shouldn't get surgery. And I, I could contextualize this if I knew more about this person and if we were having a face-to-face conversation. Um, but it it's we are so much more as humans than the way that we look in the mirror and having a Mm -hmm. little i wrote an article many many years ago called the hero's abs are irrelevant where it basically was like what makes us great isn't the tenths place in our body fat percentage it's not our lower ab fat it's not a four pack versus a six pack it's not like these little aesthetic minute differences that only you notice that nobody else notices about you. That's not what makes you a person, what makes you amazing. It's all the other stuff. And so I don't know exactly how, but helping her no, I wouldn't recommend the surgery and finding ways to, and and guess what? I'm not putting this on her. Like we need to have less of a, uh, like, like a, I don't know vanity around probably I would call it like vanity and like even like over sexualization in in content and on the internet of like there's there's too much attention on this stuff that doesn't matter it's are you healthy how are you performing how do you feel physically like those are the things that really matter not you know if you feel like you have a little bit of extra around your obliques yeah there's too much focus on how do you look and and too much of a of a scrutinization of every centimeter of your body like it's not quote unquote perfectly the way that you want it and it's sad that the first response is i've been doing this for five plus years and that just must mean i have to cut myself open and and pay for a surgery to to take these things off that are just it's a part of me it's not unhealthy it's not it's not bad it's not doing any any damage realistically nobody probably even notices except for you and uh it's so like surgery is a big deal surgery is a big fucking deal to go under the knife to cut yourself open like you're literally wounding yourself you have a literal wound and not like you know a paper cut like they are literally cutting you open to change to what to remove a little bit of love handle i mean it's it's crazy and and again not against this individual for saying it It sucks that like that's where so many people are 
in terms of like, they think like, all right, well, let's just get surgery. And they think that that's going to change their life. It's going to change everything about them. And the sad reality is like, that's not going to change how you really feel about yourself. It's not because then once the surgery is over, you know what you're going to be, you're going to get the scars. Oh my God. Now the scars, like, I don't like how they look. And people are going to be like, oh my God, did you get surgery to remove your love handles? Then they're going to judge me for that. And da, 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 da. It's like, Good point. it's, there's the, there's always going to be, and even though you might not see the love handles anymore, or other people might not see them as much. Now you're going to be focusing on something else, focusing on something else. And it's a never ending pursuit uh, that will never, it will, you'll never get to the end of it. There will never be a finish line where it's like, okay, I no longer have any insecurities, which is why I think it's so much more important to focus on what you can do as opposed to, you know, little things like that, where you store body fat here. And again, I'm not talking about a 350 pound person who needs to lose weight because they're a diabetic and all that. We're talking about someone who's already lean, already healthy, already fit. You've been lifting for five years and you've got a little bit of love handle. So do I. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, so do I. And I've dieted myself down lean enough to where I didn't and I hated it. It sucked. Mm-hmm. It wasn't fun. Mm-hmm. And I was still able to find things that I didn't like. I was still able to find things about myself that like I, I, I was insecure over it. So that's why it's like, focus on, on what you can do. Focus on the things that make you better, that make your family better, that make you a better member of society that like uh, allow you to, to impact yourself and more people, whether it's, you know, your performance in the gym, how much you can lift your chin ups, your push ups, your deadlift, or what you're doing with your job or what a great mom or dad you're being or, or kid you're being like, like focus on the things that you can do that actually make a positive impact not the you know how much what can i do to get a little bit more pec separation yeah and this isn't some body positivity bullshit that we're feeding you we're not we're not mm-hmm. about that life this like Mm-mm. we're not telling you at 300 pounds that you're okay just the way you are and that you don't need to change correct but you wanting to lose four pounds off of your love handles and it not happening and so you wanting to get surgery like that's that's the other side of the pendulum. Yeah, this is, we're about body negativity. <laughs> <laughs> Clip that. <laughs> Clip that and cancel this man. I used to follow you, but I unfollow now. Sigh it. When you said you were all for body negativity. <laughs> uh, great episode. We hope that you enjoyed. More coming weekly uploads yeah let's do it a f- little 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 five star review with a comment maybe just to offset a couple of the one stars we got in the middle of there but like please that would help us massively <laughs> greatly appreciate it and uh yeah coming in hot next week too see ya <laughs>